Hello guys, Wanda here for the third time. <laughs> I'm testing to see if the comments are working. So if anybody's out there, can you send me a little note and tell me hi? I have no idea if it's working or not. So I'm just doing some tests now. <laughs> I was going to be going live. and it, Oh, hi. Okay, the, the comments are on. We're up, guys. <laughs> I am so frustrated and I am so sorry that this is happening. I don't know what's going on. I've sent Facebook 1500 messages about the comments and why, why is this happening? So, okay, that's enough of me going on and on and on. So I have a question. <laughs> uh, you may have seen it in the first live a few minutes ago. If you read that, um, <laughs> Hey everyone, I would like to create a chat room on messenger face, Facebook messenger. Um, for anybody who wants to be included uh, so that when I'm going live, I can just pop in there and send you a little message saying, hey, I'm going live. And then, you know, how you all get notified when you have a message in Messenger, right? So if you have your notifications on, you should get a little ding. And that way you can be notified. So apparently, I can't send you a notification unless I have a business live going. So... I'm thinking that might be a way to solve the problem. So what I'm thinking is after this um, uh, live is done, I will go back through the comments. And if you said yes or put me on the messenger chat or so, I make it so I can identify that you want to be included in there or I can make a whole nother post. I don't know. Anyways, if it's a good idea, tell me. If you don't like it and you think it's too invasive, tell me that too. Because I never know. Who's trying to get on with me here? Hello, everyone. Hi, Cindy. Sally, Susan, Matt. Sheila. Who else do I have? I'm so glad to see you guys. I hate that when I can't see the comments. Okay, so tonight I'm just playing around. Uh, I don't think it's technically a tutorial. I just wanted to be here with you guys and work while I'm with you. <laughs> so this is still that um, commission order I'm working on. Hi, Cindy, this is yours. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm working on it tonight, and I like to work and talk at the same time. But I also wanted to show you guys the Juanita, spelled W-E-N-I-D-A, can't see that because the color's so bright. <laughs> you need some sunglasses. Uh, anyways, these are chrome powders. And they come with a fun tool that I used last night. <laughs> um, they come with this brush. And it's kind of a mess from last night. I should have cleaned it better. Sorry. Anyways, it's got a brush on one end and a silicone tool on the other end. And I really like the way it worked. So I'm going to use it to do the body of my dragonfly, of Cindy's dragonfly, and um, some of these beautiful colors for Leo, who loves primary colors. Yay, Debbie, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna pick out some colors. Also, I have some Born Pretty colors here that I haven't tried yet, so um, I'm actually gonna do a little tester rock before I put it on Leo's rock, because this is a very special rock. So, let me grab a tester rock. I know you guys probably freak out. It's a Santorini. What are you doing? I have I have to. <laughs> I have to test it out. Okay, so I'm just going to make some stripes of nail art foil glue. No, I'm going to use top coat. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm sorry I said that. I meant top coat. Actually, I think I'm going to just make some dots. And then test some colors. I also need to put it on black. Hopefully this will dry pretty fast. Wow, my circles tonight are not very circular, huh? So how is everyone? Hi, Teresa. <laughs> Yay, Cindy. I'm so glad too. I love to share my 
process. Okay, so seriously, I'm just trying to get some black dots down there so I can test out the different um, colors of the powders here. <laughs> so I'm probably going to be on for some time tonight. Um, I'm thinking probably a good couple of hours. So if you guys have things to do, places to be, I totally understand. I'm just, I just want to hang out. Hi, Susan. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> At least it's not a perfect one, and it has some stains and some big chips in it, so I'm not using a, a perfect one. And it's actually fairly little compared to generally. Girl, if I could afford the shipping, I would, I would so send you some. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so I think that's good enough. So, top coat for me has proven to be the best. Um, what would that be? The best uh, base for the powders. It's so strange because no wipe top coat is pretty much like cured resin, nice and glossy and sealed. You would think nothing would stick to it. But these powders <laughs> buff out beautifully on there. So. <laughs> so I'm also going to be putting these wings together and resining them like I've done 500 to see if I could figure it out. I'm going to be trying to do them like this, but separate pieces. And then I'll add them together on the actual rock like this, kind of, if that makes sense. I am so in love with this new uh, technique. <laughs> I'm kind of addicted to it right now, if you guys can't tell. Hi, Michelle. All right. So let's test these out. One, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't make enough, but we'll do halfsies. <laughs> the ones I want to use are purple, blue, there's a red by Born Pretty and a gold, there's a green, there's the green. I think that'll work and then that's kind of a yellow. We'll do that. So Born Pretty red first. I'm just going to grab it actually just, it only takes a tiny bit, so I'm just going to grab it from the lid and do half. That's quite pretty. You guys see that? The powder is, um, I think Born Pretty calls it mirror powder. Let me see if I can get closer with it. <laughs> this is number eight mirror powder. Uh, it's a red color. I have two sets here. One's Born Pretty and one is Juanita. I think that's W-E-N-I-D-A. So I'm just testing colors right now because I don't, these are so gorgeous, these Juanitas. They are like color shifting bananas. <laughs> it's so cool. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera though. No, you can't. That is not good.
Maybe you can see it a little there. Hmm. No, just, but trust me, it's gorgeous. This is like a purple green gold shift. It's purple green gold flash. Hi, Karen and Debbie. Again. <laughs> no. All right, so I'm just going to test the colors real quick and then we'll get back over to the dragonfly. Oh, definitely. That blue is like an electric. It's so pretty. I don't know what's going on on Facebook Live, you guys. It's like, seems like it would be my phone, but my phone is pretty consistent and it seems like they're, um, options have changed on the live part of it the app there's no not as many tools and I can't get comments half the time so I apologize for all that this is a purple blue shift Ooh, I think this is the one Cindy if you see something you love you just shout out there Okay, look, see blue? I wish you could see the purple. It goes purple one direction. This is the one I'm looking at. Focus. It won't show the purple. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Don't know about all that. We're going to check the gold. Now, these Born Pretties are sort of like interference. Um, they're kind of a clear, and then when you put them on black, they change the color. And you can't really see them if you put them on white. Wow, that just went everywhere. Ooh, that's pretty. Can you guys see that? <laughs> so it's like a green. There, I think you can almost see the purple on the other one. On this one. If I hold my hand here, it sort of focuses. And here is, this is a gold. Hi Margie, these are just squirting everywhere. <laughs> when you open the uh, package, sometimes the um, powder just goes flying everywhere. Ooh, it's like a lemony yellow. So pretty. Okay, what's another one? So we did this one's like a this is pretty. Kind of a goldy bronze. Really pretty color. I'm going to try the brush on the other end. I'm going to put it on the white. And on the black. Ooh, on the black it's like metal. Can you see that? Just like metal. So I really like these uh, chrome powders a lot. Hi Judy and Marty. Okay, so I think these are winners in my book. That gold was a born pretty number 
nine. Let's try the, oh, I ran out of places. Oh no, there's one right here. It's on white, but this is the Juanita gold. You know, these are really uh, not too expensive either. Oh, this one doesn't work. Hmm. I can remove the color with alcohol. So we can use these again, I think. Oh, that's pretty. The difference is this one's a holographic gold. Can you see that? Can you see the hollow shift? Oh, that is gorgeous. So this is holographic gold. In this set, you get a holographic gold, a holographic silver. Um, it looks like a magenta. Purple with a blue shift. Purple with a turquoise shift. This is a, oh my God, this one is so crazy. It has like five colors, I can see. There's a copper, a green gold, a purple. I wish you could see all these different colors. Even if I take off the lid, you just, there's no doing this justice. kind of see the green shift but seriously I just say get it don't even just get it <laughs> just do it this one is just a crazy like electric blue color really beautiful and this one's like a it shifts from aqua to like electric blue and you cannot see them on camera but I We'll guarantee you that you will love these. And there's eight in that pack, and you get this brush with it. You get all of those with it. And they come in this. <laughs> so, there. Now you guys see what I've been using for the last little bit for the powders and the Born Pretties. And I can link both of those after the live, so you'll know. But I'm going to use these. on Leo's Dragonfly. Gotta clean my hands here, make sure we're all clean, ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna start. <laughs> I'll get you the link, Debbie, if you want to, if you can't, I can't link it while I'm on live, but if you want to look it up, it is uh, W-E-N-I-D-A, Juanita chrome powder or nail powders and then they have two options it comes with this or that comes with the eyeshadow applicators you can choose which one you want and it's on Amazon so I am going to put some of this top coat in a dish and a paint well thing and I'm going to use it with an eyeliner brush disposable eyeliner brush so that I can control what's going on here and I'm basically going to use it like I would nail art foil glue pretty much I'm going to apply it in sections and giving definition between the sections. I'm going to try to anyways. I'm going to come down closer so you guys can see. So see I'm leaving the separation in the sections. I'm going to do separate sections and then come back. 
Uh, yes, Lori's asking, is the background done in watercolors? It is. I just did, uh, these are the homemade watercolors also. Um, the neons and um, this is the neon blue that I made and then I take a paper towel, wad it up and remove some of the color while it's wet. Okay, I'm going to spot cure those two places. Yes, Debbie, I am actually going to use some holographic dots in his eyes that I love doing on dragonfly eyes. As a matter of fact, I have them on Holly's eyes over here. I'll show you that while that's curing. See the eyes here on Holly's dragonfly? I don't know if I showed you guys this. I don't think I have. Can you see all the jewels on Holly's? <laughs> so now you know what we're doing. <laughs> So the body was done with the chrome powder and then I foiled on top of it. The wings are the 3D wings that we're also doing here tonight. And I'll be adding some bling bling to the, what is that, thorax or which bits are, is that on a dragonfly? I don't know. But lots of jewels and rhinestones. I just love the 3D part. I'm trying to get a good angle so you guys can see it. <laughs> can you see the wings? Anyways, that's what I'm doing here tonight. Now this one is for Holly. And then Leo likes the... Aw, Cindy, thank you. Hi, Julie. Um, Leo likes the primary colors, so I'm trying to keep that I always keep repeating it to myself so I can stay on track with what colors I'm picking out so I'm going to start up at the head with the red the born pretty red I think I'm actually going to get a small brush for this one because I don't want to get the red all over the rock It's a dry brush. I just dipped it in the powder, in the chrome powder. And then you can take a real fluffy brush, a very fluffy one that wouldn't uh, burnish anything into your rock and then dust off the additional okay so there's the red I'm actually going to move that off of the towel Okay, so the next color, I'm going to use the, the crazy fun holographic gold. Hopefully we can see on the camera. Yes, yes they are, Julie. They should be the uh, Juanitas that you ordered. Yep, these are them.
I'm going to grab the silicone tool because it does a good burnish and rub, uh, buffs in that holographic powder to give you that aurora. Can you guys see it? Oh, it's so great. Oh my gosh, it makes me like a kid. I love the rainbow. Look at that. I bet you guys are all on Amazon, aren't you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yay. Yes, the hollow is amazing with this, this powder. It's good stuff. It does look 3D. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do the next sections here. And this big section I'm not too awful worried about because I'll be adding some bling bling and the wings get attached right here. So it will pretty much be covered, but I'm still going to color it in anyways. But I'm going to use that um, kind of a green color. My fax machine is going. That's weird. How long has it been since anybody got a fax, right? Hmm. So I'm thinking about this is like a blue green or this one, like green green. Yeah. I love that, uh, the little flashlight. It's almost the perfect light. I want to get it in a bigger size, but I don't think it would be the same because the more LEDs, the more powerful the light is. That one, it, cure, it doesn't cause any bubbles or wrinkling or nothing to nail foil glue or top coat. or It's just perfect, but it only does little tiny spots at a time. So if you're working on a big project, it takes forever. So this is a Born Pretty color. And I'll give you the number for this one. It's W, uh, Teresa's asking again for the name of the powders and it is, let me see if I can make it focus there. W-E-N-I-D-A. I wish there was a part on the back, but so the one I just used here is the Born Pretty Powder number seven. And again, don't you worry, as soon as I'm done, I promise to give links. I'm trying to be really good about that. If there's ever one you're missing or that's missing, you guys can always PM me or put a comment in the the uh, feed. You know, sometimes it takes me a while to get through all the comments, so the best way to get me is through a, a PM in Messenger. And I pay attention to my Messenger before the comments because I literally have hundreds of notifications a day, so it's hard for me to find them all sometimes. Okay, I just did three little sections. I'm going to do, let's see, in a couple of different blue colors. Oh, 
Oh, Deborah went to Dollar Tree. <laughs> You'll have to show us your loot later. Okay, so this is the bluish. Uh, this one shifts, I believe. Yeah, from aqua to blue. Isn't that a pretty color too? Oh, yeah, that book's hard to find. It's so hard to find. I've only seen it in two stores and I grabbed all, I think it was all of four copies total that I could get my hands on. I want to be that person who would copy it and give it out, but I know that's against the law, so I'm trying not to be that person. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, Crayola's on to something. They ought to uh, release that in mass. <laughs> it's a good one. That is such a pretty color. Guess what? It's a holographic blue. Oh my gosh. I'm not kidding. Hang on just a minute and you'll see. You'll heat you. <laughs> I didn't know it was. That is crazy. The things I'm finding out. Can you see the hollow? In this one right here. You can't, I can see it perfectly. You guys can't see it as well as the gold one, but it does have the Aurora in it as well. So cool. And you can't see that in just the powder. It doesn't show you that. All right, this one is, seriously, it's a dark green. See the blue? Now it's blue. Green, blue, purple. You guys can see that, right? Green, blue, purple. This is a fun color. There's the purple. Look at the lid. Green. <laughs> the coolest color yet. <laughs> Let's see what it does when we buff it in. It's way cool, but you guys, you're not, for some reason, the camera doesn't pick it up. It picked it up in the lid, but it's doing the same thing on the rock that it did in the lid. You just can't see it on the camera. Crazy. There, yeah. Purple, blue, green. 
They don't have names, so we'll call this one a fantastic. <laughs> All right, so then I need to, I think I'll go back up in the colors here. Let's do some purples. We'll go this color purple. <laughs> Wait, is that the one I just did? No way. Wow, this one's cool too. Purple, uh, turquoise, and like a silvery gold, like a bronzy color. Very cool. Oh, I guess I should put the top coat down there, huh? Hi, Karen. And just let these cure just for a moment. Okay, this fun one, I'm going to put here on the big part. <laughs> oh, that's so bad that you can't see it on video. Dang it. But you can see it in the cap. <laughs> I wonder why that is. What's the science, guys? Any scientists? Why we can see it in the lid, but not where it's supposed to be. Ooh, that's so pretty. I have a feeling this one's going to turn holographic like turn into a hollow. I can just tell there's like some crazy little cool sparkles in here. It is. Oh, it is. Oh, this is cool. I'm going to do two spots with it. Let me pick it up so you guys can see. Can you see that? Julie, what is what? The tool or the color? The color I doesn't have a name. It's just the magenta one. But the tool comes with the pack.
the color. It's um the it doesn't they don't have names. I wish they did. But it's part of the Juanita pack. And I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm going to do some more of the gold, gold hollow. This one is so cool. And I'm going to do some of the silver hollow at the end here. I'm pretty sure it's this set. Uh, you have Julie. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if you... It's the link you posted the other day. I bought a second set and this is what came. Which was different from the first set I bought. So hopefully... It's all the same, but I'll, I'll put the absolute link that I got from these, which is the link you gave me, so. Okay, there's the gold hollow and the silver hollow. And then there's that uh, magenta hollow. And I think they're all supposed to be kind of holographic. Some of them do it better than others. But you can see it all up through here. Yeah, don't sneeze for dang sure. I'm trying not to move too much. <laughs> and they're just little bitty tiny pots. I don't know if you can see this. Like, there's my thumb. See how big they are? They're little bitty. So when you get them, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, there's nothing in there. But I don't know if you guys can see how much I used. And it's literally barely any. There are some colors that I've had for over a year. And I made watercolor paint with them even. And I still have half pots left. You know, like these. <laughs> All right, one color left at the end. What should it be? A green? Probably a green, huh? And then I'll show you guys again how I'm doing the 3D wings. This is a Born Pretty Interference color. It's like a clear powder that turns stuff green. <laughs> yes, green, right? All right, so I'm just gonna take my pasta and uh, redefine our parts here. Yes, that's it. Thank you, Julie. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you. Julie's on vacation, everybody. <laughs> thank you for working on off the clock. There you go. So I think, no, that's pretty opaque. I was going to do, okay, over here, I'm going to use some hollow sparkle and let it dry while I'm working on the 3D wings. This is the um, 
is it Naturalist Paint Company? I put my holographic paint away so I can't see the bottle. <laughs> Oh no. This is such a beautiful paint too. It's gorgeous. A little bit goes a long ways with it as well. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Thank you for the paint, too. She's a sweetheart. She sent me the, the paint. I love it so much. Okay. Let me give you a... Can see that? Hollows. Can you see that? It's very pretty. We have a very pretty holographic dragonfly going here. Pretty, pretty. <laughs> Jody says, I should show you guys my supplies. It is really very scary in here, but I'll show you if you want to see. You guys want to see? <laughs> okay, it's very, very unorganized, but I'll give you a tour. <laughs> I gotta unhook the phone, hang on. Okay, scary desk coming up. You guys are going to be so ashamed of me. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Uh, yeah. Okay, so over here is where I teach painting to my student, which I have not cleaned up from today. The fax machine, my copier, the paint on the wall. Uh, and then over here, I have scary, scary, scary some more. <laughs> the foil section. Foil, 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 foil. Uh, rhinestones. That is all stickers, tattoos, uh, rub-ons, just crazy stuff. Here's some, I don't know, even <laughs> paint pens. <laughs> The paper plates, I swear I wasn't eating. We were trying to paint some Bob Ross trees. And... <laughs> I didn't have any paper handy, so we were using the back of our plates. <laughs> Anyways, here's some finished rocks that are just here. The butterfly I did a while back. Some more, more stuff. That is actually a hang on the wall thing that you paint on, but I use it for my desk. <laughs> and here's the tools or the stuff. I've got paint pouring, glues and sealers and acetone, Arteza paint pens, sponge brushes and palettes. This is the new foil section, which they're on reorder now. See, they're so empty. Anyways, when they come, it will be full of foils that I will be sending out again. Uh, yeah, so right now I'm just using it to store my messy stuff on. 
<laughs> so there, guys. <laughs> the scary, scary office. And my full trash can. <laughs> Just forget. Oh, I forgot to show you the rocks. The rocks. And Miss Katie gave me some fun rocks down there, too. Okay, back to work. Yes, the dowel helps tons for me to pull the foils off. Oh my gosh, if it wasn't for the dowel, we'd be... Yeah, but so you guys can just yell at me for being so messy. I'm a messy, messy. Messy, messy, messy. Embarrassing, huh? I need, I need an OCD person to come over here and, like, have their way with my room. <laughs> it's funny, though, because I know where everything is, and I can actually straighten it up in about 10 minutes. It's just, I have five projects going on in my head, so I start digging for things, and, you know, it ends up everywhere. <laughs> You, yeah, I usually try to keep this one little like 12 by 12 area clean so the camera thinks I might be an organized person, but highly unlikely. Most artists, believe it or not, are a wreck. <laughs> usually, we're a wreck. I feel like Lori's probably really organized. <laughs> what? White space. Karen, what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> now that I'm thoroughly embarrassed, I look like a tomato. <laughs> but you remember me. I'm the girl who told you I would show you good, bad, and ugly. And that includes my workspace. Okay, I gotta move this beauty out of the way so that I don't mess it up at all whatsoever. <sighs> now we're gonna do some fun stuff. <laughs> Fingers crossed, because you know I've only done this 500 times and it has uh, been a wreck. So I'm gonna work on. This is a window film. This is actually the Dollar Tree window film. And I'm not really using it for the film per se, but I'm going to lay these down so that I can work one side at a time, if that makes sense. Actually, I'm going to make a new one. You guys want to see how I do it? So this is also Dollar Tree Clear Placemat. I cut it in half. There's also one right here. Can you see it? They're transparent. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut off a section here. I would use my bigger scissors, but they're lost in the mess in here. <laughs> I'm going to make a big one so I have a bigger space to work on. I also use these for swiping when I do paint pours. Which is fun. Let me, oh, I gotta show you guys. I don't know if you remember that girl I did a while back. She was very pretty and then she dried very ugly. And this is still really dark, but I'm way, way better with this. I think I'm gonna make it like a C. Can you see that? That's paint pouring. Anyways, I did a swipe. Not pretty. I like this one. That was with Arteza, Arteza or Arteza pouring paint. So the Dollar Tree has these window films. It comes in this box and it's with like the, so what is that, contact paper section. Comes in a roll. It's 11 by 8, 11.8 .8 by 47.2 inches, which is quite a bit. So anyways, I'm just going to, and it's sticky on one side. I'm just going to cut off a section here.
give her some highlights. Definitely. I'm still working on her for sure. But I'm just happy she looks way better than she did. Because she was a mess. <laughs> I didn't want to scrap it, you know? you know. Nothing's ever truly ruined, right? We can Bob Ross this thing back to life. <laughs> so I'm going to work on this uh, placemats come two to a pack, uh, just so you know. I think I've shown you that before. They look like this. So they come in this pack. It's two pieces and I use them for everything. I use them to work on, to <laughs> I cut them up and make stuff all the time. So I'm just going to put a piece of this on top of it. If I can get the backing off of the window film. <laughs> so it's like a big sticker. Yay. I sent um, most people, I had enough of the other window film, and I sent it out with the foil orders. So if you got foil, chances are you got a piece of window film from me. It was either this or the other one that I had. Because I ran out of the other one, so I was substituting this in there. And that's my gift to you, so that if you wanted to play around with the 3D uh, tutorial, you could. Now the one I'm doing today, these wings, um, they're not technically using this to form the wing, but because I'm using acetate instead. Now these wings have been purchased, by the way. Um, I cannot share the file. They're very copyrighted. Um, my Beaded Bohemian on Etsy. I think she's out until the 11th on uh, vacation. Anyways, she sells this um, file, this digital file with the wings. She makes beautiful wings. Lots of beautiful wings. I forgot to connect it. Usually I double stick tape it to the, I'm just going to pull the resin out around it so it'll stay. <laughs> um, so basically I'm just moving the UV resin around the acetate and I'm going to cure it and make it a bigger, stronger piece. Just kind of like I did the 3D wings last night, the sticker. I'm also going to give it a little tab out here so that I can bend it and attach it to the rock easier. And don't worry if it's like all, see how it's out there? That's okay, you can cut that off easily with scissors. So the idea is you're just making it thicker, stronger, easier to manage. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to do one at a time. Make sure that you want to torch very quickly. Get the bubbles out, but not... <laughs> you don't want to melt anything here. We're dealing with plastic. And that's totally okay like that. Don't, don't worry. Actually, I think I'm going to thicken it up right in here. And stick it in the light for 30 seconds at a time. And it will curl because it's acetate and it gets hot, you know, plastic kind of melts. <laughs> the
the wings are printed on acetate um, paper. Transparency film. And I have an inkjet. So, good news is, you can do this with an ink tip. <laughs> Everybody that I was watching says, you can only do it with, uh, you know, the laser printers, but I'm hard-headed, so I'm sure it will work better with a laser printer, for sure, absolutely, but I don't have one and I'm not buying one. Okay, this is 30 seconds. Perfect. See how it peeled up off of the absolutely perfect that's exactly what I wanted to see so we have one cured wing and I'm going to cut off the extra right now while it's kind of pliable before it gets cooled down I actually like the print that this leaves on it <laughs> now it's not cured all the way so it's still a bit sticky but I'm going to do the other side of it. And this side's kind of a balancing game. So you don't want to go over too much on this one. So you put it on, take your toothpick, bring it to the edges. You can use your little 6 watt um, on this part just to get the first initial cure down. You could probably use it throughout, but it'll just take a long time to cure this resin. So I know the kit comes with that 6 watt, the Mr. Resin, but for some reason I can't. I don't like the cure with the little 6 watt. It takes forever, like 20 minutes. Okay, see how nice and thick they are? So I'm just going to hold this under the little 6 watt. So we're kind of encapsulating the wing. See it bend? There it goes. And it's bending. So you want to hold it the direction you want the bend. That makes sense. So I'll be attaching this to Leo's rock like this. It'll be above the other wing like so. And then I'll be adding bling bling over the top of where it's attached right here. And I'll be offsetting them just a bit like that. So we can see what's going on underneath. All right, I'm gonna pop that back there in the big uh, light to finish curing for probably a minute. And we'll start this one. I'm blocking the light. <laughs> I don't want it to cure while I'm working.
Thank you, Lori. You guys are so sweet. I'm drawing right around the outside of it just so that it kind of seals the edge of the acetate because the acetate will peel apart from the resin if you don't encapsulate it. So make sure I have a nice tab to work with. Yay, Deborah's going out to look for monarch eggs. If you guys haven't seen it, Deborah, you might get a lot of friend requests or post it on the page. She she raises monarchs. They're, it's amazing, you guys. Amazing. And she's a great photographer. She has like a microscope camera thingy. Anyway, she takes pictures of the eggs that are like that could fit on the end of a toothpick and then she, she takes pictures of them hatching <laughs> right it's amazing she's a good mom she's a good monarch mommy thanks Lori I'm really having fun with this technique it is like I don't know my brain explodes you know I have little like moments each day like oh what else can I do with it <laughs> one million and two applications so I made these little parts a little bigger than what they are on the scan or the digital here's some of the printed wings so see how they're these are actually cicada wings, not dragonfly wings, but I feel like they make better dragonfly wings on my rocks than dragonfly wings do. I like a more whimsical, you know, mythological looking dragonfly. I do have some proper dragonfly wings, but I don't know. I like these better. Anyways, I made these bigger with alcohol ink. I just added a little section to the bottom. Um, Debbie, Deborah, the monarch, Debbie, Debbie's asking about, um, the, what color are the monarch eggs and they are white. They're, um, and they lay like one egg at a time and it's on, I forgot the name of the plant. It's one plant that they lay eggs on. They eat the plant. Um, it's like their sole source of life pretty much. But it's a white, it looks like a little cotton ball, but they're tiny, 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 tiny. You would be able to see the egg with your naked eye, but they're tiny. Little white, looks like a little white cotton ball. <laughs> Milkweed, yes, that's it. <laughs> I'm get a little bend here. Oh, come on, pop up there. There we go. See there how it um, detached from the acetate. So you want to get it encapsulated before that happens. I'm going to just trim off the excess before I add the rest of the resin. Okay, I'm going 
going to Where did it lift at? There, okay. Put it on this side. And I want to get the edges, make sure it's enclosed. Here, so Jody's asking how I come up with so many great ideas. You guys, <laughs> you guys give me most of my ideas, believe it or not. I am, um, I'll see something you paint. Ow, that's hot right there on my finger. Sorry, I gotta get it off me. Eek. It's part of me now, forever. It's okay, once it cures enough, it'll pop right off. <laughs> Don't do this without gloves, I'm telling you people. <laughs> it's uh, not smart. So I get a lot of my ideas. Uh, watch YouTube pff, all day, night, and day. And I love to watch like nail tech videos. I don't wear nails, I don't do nails, but I used to. And I love the artwork, some of the... Um, artists do on nails and it looks really great on canvas and on rocks <laughs> so I end up doing things like that on other things and then um, you know if I see it on a nail I, can I do that on a rock even and then I'll try it on a rock so that's where most of the nail supplies come in I saw Rachel um, Rachel's Rocks Canada use nail foils for the first time on a rock and that uh, is where my brain really took off too. I got stuck on that and uh, I haven't been able to <laughs> go any other direction. So now I'm the foiling rock lady, which I'm okay with. Good night, Julie. I hope your baby feels better. I'm sorry. change the gloves. It's always good to have a few pairs of gloves around too because you'll need to change so you don't transfer you know resin between your tools or your projects or get it on something you don't want it on because getting it off requires alcohol or acetone and a lot of times that will ruin whatever it is you're doing. Good idea to have some extras around. And then don't touch it. Hopefully I don't get a blister here. we doing 
This one feels nice. Pretty neat, Cindy, huh? How it came together. Hi, Leslie. Okay, I'm going to cut this off while I can. Okay, our wings. I have to give this one a little bit more of a bend here. Bend. I like them. Nice and firm. All right, I'm gonna set those aside and work on the other half of the wings. So same deal, just um, add the resin, cure, and then do the other side. <laughs> oh, Cindy, thank you. I I think it's really cool um getting to create a piece for you know, someone when they do a commission, it's very special to me. I take lots of time and make sure to pay close attention to what you're wanting. Okay, that's the first side of that one. It's perfect. I love how it just perfectly, they bend perfect on them on their own. It's nice. Okay, I'm gonna do it on the back side. I'm gonna do a thin coat.
I'm just bending this one just a bit. It didn't bend as much as the other one. So I want it to dry with a little bit of a curve. Or cool, I should say. Yep, this is the little 6 watt by MAC Art. Sorry about that. It doesn't cure it all the way, but it cures it enough to where I can handle it um, and work on it. See if you'll see it's still kind of sticky and wet in here. But I can handle it this way and then pop it in for another two or three cures. Aww. what we got here okay so that's both sides of this one I'm gonna pop that in the big one now so that it'll cure harder and I'll give that a minute in there to start Cindy, I do. I have over a hundred YouTube videos. I thought you knew, honey. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It's the Foiling Rock Lady and Friends. <laughs> I have to wipe in between. This is like my fourth set. So Debbie, <laughs> Debbie's saying, I'm sure my gloves won't look like yours. Um, I use a towel in between and then I have extra pairs sitting right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I make a mess, a big old mess. I'm so excited. We are so close to attaching wings and things. <laughs> We're so close. Yay. All right, a cure in the big one for this one. I'll show you guys. I think it's going to be good. We got like that and this side will be like that pretty rainbow wings huh nice okay one more cure for that little one okay while I got you on here miss Cindy turn this over Um, I'm going to be putting the resin on. Oh, I got to do the eyes. I'm glad I'm looking at it. Okay. Foil for the eyes is it's out of this foiling kit. I like to do this one foil for eyes. It's like got holographic dots in it. Okay, this is nail art foil glue. And I like to put a nice big dollop of it so it's nice and domed and eyeballish looking. <laughs> eyeballish. Is that a word even? And then give that a cure. Make sure that's either with the 6 watt or the flashlight, the 12 LED. Because the big one will wrinkle and bubble that real bad. All right, they already look like eyeballs. Look at that. <laughs> you guys see that in there? The reflection? They look like eyeballs. It's reading my mind.
All right, come on. Almost done. And the one I like to use for the eyeballs is this flowery one right here, but it's the little dots on it. I'm cutting away all the little flower bits so it doesn't get in my eyes. <clears throat> and there's the eyes. Easy peasy. I'm going to go down the um, dragonfly with some foil real fast as well so it has a like a sort of filigree look to it and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about so on this dragonfly can you see the patterns going down the dragonfly body that's what we're doing so basically you just add a dot of the foil glue to the top of the uh, body parts Can you guys see the bubble right there? Make sure the bubbles are gone or it'll leave a big hole in your foil. And I'm doing the whole body. I'm going to do it all in one go. Thank you, Teresa. Teresa says it's beautiful as is. That is so, so very kind. I agree. I agree. It's very pretty. But you guys know me. I'm just extra. So I got to add. Okay, one little torch to get rid of the bubbles. Okay, and I'm gonna put, actually, I'm gonna use the light here because it's longer than, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to get out of shot there. You know, with the foil glue on there, it look, they look like jewels, <laughs> like gems. You know, I could put the transparent foil on, but it's like one of those might be a fluorescent powder. Can you see it glowing right there? You know, some of these nail powders are 
uh, glow in the club, you know, their club glow, so they're neon. But if they're holographic, you can't really see the neon until you get under a black light. Like this. Boom. See? <laughs> Didn't look neon until it is. Okay. So on these, I like to grab, as you can see here where I use this little piece of the foil. So can you see the designs in here? I just like to add those around uh, our bug and where it makes sense, you know. So I'm going to cut off some sections. And like that one there, I love this one here. So I'll put that, where should I put that? Right up here. I'm going to start it right here. So you can see where I put it. Right there. Okay, then the next section. Can you see these two fun parts here? Those are going to go right like so. And then, let's see, I'll come right down here with this part. There we go. Now, if you get a section where you don't want, see out here and in here, where you don't want the nail foil, you can remove it with alcohol, the pattern. The foil glue is a different story, but it will be covered by the resin, so the foil glue won't show. But like this pattern out here, I don't want it there. So now it's gone. So alcohol removes the foil pattern. And then you can add back in your definition, you know, between your, if you want that. Jody, uh, for curing resin, the bigger light is my recommendation. It, um, the flashlight to cure resin would take you probably an hour of holding it. So for UV resin, you're going to want an 84 watt or higher, and that will make it about between a four and eight minute job depending on what brand of resin you end up with and you being in Canada I don't know if you can get it but Mr. Resin is my choice you can talk to Susan Nelson and uh, who else is up there oh my brain just went dead uh, Annie Mellet is that how you say your last name Annie about their resins which ones they use and that work for them because it makes a difference. Like the resin to do this kind of stuff, it for some reason doesn't always cure on a rock. And I think it's the temperature. I think rocks are really different 
you know, <laughs> to make resin cure on a rock is, is not as easy as it sounds. So there is that. We like it. So now I'm going to be attaching the wing parts and then we're going to add uh, some rhinestones and some bling bling. Here we go. Oh, no, no, we don't. No, we don't. Hang on just a minute. You guys, can you give me 30 seconds? I got to spray this rock or it's, it's going to be a mess. Let me spray it real quick. Okay. Run outside just for a minute. Give me a minute. Sorry. I'm back. See how fast was that? <laughs> It's not always necessary with UV resin to spray seal. That was Rust-Oleum 2X matte. Um, but when you have a project that you want to last a long, you know, that you need it to be a lifelong piece for someone, always do all those in between steps. Make sure you have a nice UV a protectant. These are watercolors, so you want to make sure they're set nice and well. <laughs> Got to give it just a minute to dry. Cindy, you're giving me a big head. Almost. I'm looking for my fan. seeing a little bit of transfer here. I think it was powder that was on the rock that I couldn't see. Hang on, I think we can get it off. Whew. Yay, saved. <laughs> All right, okay, now it's time to resin. So this literally only needs a couple minutes to dry, and then you can go right into your next step. That's why I love that spray. Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Coat Clear Matte. So I'm just going to apply my resin. And then I like to use a brush but it's not necessary you can use your gloved hand
Okay, and then you want to torch so that you get the bubbles, if there are any. UV resin's pretty cool. There's less bubbles with it than regular resin. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, Julie. <laughs> All right, so I have a riser rock, I call it, which is just another rock that I use to put my rock on top of. Like so. And I'm using this underneath it so if for any reason something drips down it won't connect my rocks together. <laughs> that would be a disaster and it's happened to me before. So you always want to make sure to check around your edges when working with UV resin. There's no drips. You don't want those big drippy drips. It with UV resin, it's always two-sided, so there will always be around the edges kind of a, a seam, per se, that won't be absolutely perfect. Most resin is that way. So, there's a front and a back on this, so I need the back to look beautiful just like the front. I'm not going to flash the whole message, but, so there's, you know, some writing on the back of these as well, and you want those to be... You need your back to be as nice as the front, so the sides is where you can have some wiggle room. So this is still wet. I want to um, see if I can do it. <laughs> Sometimes I have to attach them separately. Let's see here. I'm going to use the light, okay? And I'm gonna set the wing in the resin where I want it. I'm going to apply a little bit of resin to the top and the underside. And I'm going to hold it there in the position I want it to be in forever. and done you just want it to grab on but make sure it's grabbed before you move your hand okay so the first part's on now the second piece goes in here just kind of a big jump there so a nice thicker piece of resin there you know right in here don't forget that your rock has resin on it too. <laughs> so have your tools out, okay? Oops, get back up there. Thank you, Cindy. I didn't want to assume. Okay, so those two are pretty um, adhered there. Now I'm being careful not to like smear the resin that's on the rest of the rock.
Cindy is saying that it's okay for me to share the backs of the rocks, so I'll show you guys the message and I'll show you how I did it too. Um, because I know a lot of us struggle with hand lettering and I am one of them. I, if, um, I can do hand lettering, but on long, um, projects with a lot of words, I'm not consistent. So I chose to print it on the acetate paper and, um, that way it would be perfect. I need four hands here. These are on there. Yay. Okay, now I need to pop this in the big light. Make sure I don't have any weird. I do. I'm going to have to do another coat of resin on here because there's a few little weird bubbles. But can you see those? That's okay. We'll do another coat of resin and that will take care of that. But look how gorgeous. Look at that. So don't worry about the actual resin on the top of the rock. Hang on, I'm going to move the phone out. Isn't that cool? All right, we're going in the light now. So this is the Jody, are you still on with us? Jody paints it up, everybody. If you haven't been, go to her page. Give it a like. She has some amazing art, too. Very beautiful artist. I have to do this one in sections because it's bigger than my light. <laughs> so I got to hold it. Oh, the phone's down. <laughs> and there goes the camera. <laughs> okay, hopefully that works. Stay. Since we're doing another coat of resin, I'm going to only cure this for probably two cycles at 120, so probably about, what is that, how many minutes is that, four minutes? And then we're, let's pick out some rhinestones while we're waiting. I Allison's asking if a 72 watt is enough to do the resin. Probably. Um, I just know for me in Texas and the humidity, anything less than an 84 has been an issue. And the way these lights work, I'll break it down for you. Most of them have three or four time settings on there. They go, it's either 10, 20, 30, 60, or 30, 60, 120. Some of them say 99. Don't know why, but <laughs> those are seconds. So you have 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds. And the way the wattage is supplied is in separation, if that makes sense. So on a 30 second, since mine is 30, 60, 120, 30 seconds will give me all 84 watts or close to it. 
60 seconds is going to split it in half, and 120, I'll get one third. So you never really get the full dose of the watts. So that's why the higher wattage for resin, the better. UV resin also works in natural sunlight. Uh, so if all else fails and you're having issues with your resin, with your light, take it out in the sunshine. Give it 10 minutes. Give it 30 at tops. If it's not cured after 30 minutes in direct sunlight, your resin has failed. And it happens. I've, I've gone through many, many UV resins that never set. They don't set correctly. So I went back to Mr. Resin. And some of the ones I've used, others have had success with, so I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> and that's in sunlight, so I don't know. I think it's, I think humidity and altitude and all of that make a difference. Okay, I'm going to put on another coat of UV resin here around and in that I'm going to put some rhinestones. I'm going to put a lot right here <laughs> and I'm going to come up the wings a bit just to make sure. And then I'm going to go underneath the wings with the brush. Now remember when you're doing this, you don't want resin dripping down the side of your rock. So be, you can be heavy handed near the center, but when you get out to the edges, go light. Less is better. Nice. Okay. I'm liking it. I'm just checking around my edges. Also, you guys, the light that you're working in, fluorescent lighting will cure will cure your uh, UV products a little bit so if you've noticed you're working with them and they start to gel it's probably the light above you that's doing that also if you're working in a room that has a window I am gently carrying something's going on here what's that Okay, in the light. Go, go, go. Sorry, I have to hold my light. I gotta find something to prop it up on here. If you guys have a light or have a rock that's bigger than your light, you can create, um, you know, prop it up on something. I like to use foil boxes, but I moved those out of my way, so I'm going to grab some paint. <laughs> Get in there. Okay. Okay, I'll 
show you. So see here, there's a space here. I propped it up on some paint bottles there, see them? They're the little sample bottles. Wait, have to be mixed. Are we talking about resin? I missed the... Teresa, okay, yeah, we're using UV resin here. Sorry, I should have said if I didn't say. Um, yes, it's pre-mixed. No mixing. Yay. It is a lot more expensive. I'll tell you that. But the headache it saves me. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I would pay, I would pay five times the amount. <laughs> Regular resin, I do use it, um, mainly in the summertime, but the humidity here kind of determines whether or not we have a successful resin. So I just prefer to do the UV inside in the controlled air. <laughs> Mr. Resin is what I recommend. It comes with some fun things. This size, this is $250. You can get this for $29.99. And it comes with a six watt light. These two goodies, this bottle, and these two, it's either one or two, I can't remember, of these little resin stir sticky things. So it's quite, I like the kit. I think the kit's worth it. Uh, they also, when in stock, Mr. Resin has stock issues. Um, they sell this in a kilo, 1,000 grams, for like 49 or 69 or something. I, I like that deal. That's a way better deal for resin, like percentage, you know, amount you get. Okay, so we're going to keep going with that. I'm grabbing some rhinestones. So, Cindy, for Leo, do you want bling, bling, bling? Or do you want just like gold or silver platinum? Do you want just... What would you like to see on here? And I do have these little cogs I just got. Um, yesterday, or the day before, I don't know when I got them, but I got them. What I do with them? Sorry. Never too much bling, I so agree with you. So I'm going to get out our colored rhinestones. And I'm trying to think for the center of the dragonfly. You know, on Holly's, which by the way, I love the spelling of Holly's name. Cindy, that's gorgeous. I used uh, the nail right here and right here. Those are... A nail what would that be settings I get I don't know what they're called <laughs> but they're for nails fingernails anyways those are these here you know they have them in different shapes and whatnot I just think they look really pretty on dragonfly parts that's those. I also have these. Might be too big for that, but these are peacock sequins. Nail gems. That works. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Duh, right? I'm just not the brightest one in the bunch there. I was going to put the rhinestones in the resin while it's wet, but I wanted to make sure that the resin set nicely. So I have another tool that we can do this with that works quite nicely. That's too big. All right, let me pull Mr. Dragonfly back into the picture. Okay. Hmm. So let's see what we got to work with here. We can do one of those. Oh, see, loving it already. Focus, camera, focus.
focus right there. <laughs> Where is it focusing? There we go. Okay. And <clears throat> I think I'm going to go with like rainbow, like a rainbow of rhinestones around this one. have these pretties. You see these? Or I have these that are all AB. They have like the Aurora Borealis coating on them. Those are pretty too. And then the little ones because it's going to take a bunch of different sizes. So let me open these. Okay, so now I'm getting the Bondic from uh, Lonnie Duro sent me this tool, Bondic. I used it last night. It's amazing. I'm going to send this. I'm going to. <laughs> all of them. I love it. Oh, Allison, I'm sorry. Allison, is wor you're working on finding a resin though, right? Or I know you just had a fail with the one you were using. And thank you for posting that, by the way. Um, who's over there? Uh, oh, I can't think. We've gone international, and I'm having a hard time remembering where everybody's at. <laughs> I know, I should remember, but there's thousands of you now. Can you believe that? Oh, my gosh. But I love you all. Top coat is good. Allison, let's talk about that. <laughs> okay, let's talk about top coat. When Allison says top coat, she's talking about, ooh, what a leaky bottle I have, a uh, nail polish UV top coat, okay? It's magic. It is basically UV resin, but it cures faster and it's glossier, <laughs> right? So why would you want to use UV resin? Because it's less expensive. Top coat is expensive. And generally, you get it like this, right? Ten bucks a bottle, usually. That's US. Uh, so, if you want to use top coat, I recommend you go with a refill. This is by Gelixer. And this one is still $45. And it's only 226 grams eight ounces but if you compare that to 250 grams it's not much smaller for about double the cost <laughs> so that's where I get hung up with it but it is beautiful and it dry it uh, cures in about 30 to 60 seconds give me just a second it I sprung a leak in the <laughs> top coat bottle Okay, back to the Bondic. <laughs> this little tool here comes in a tin, kind of like the rhinestone picker, which we're going to be using as well. Huh, right? They're like the same tool kit. <laughs> Not the same tool, same toolbox. <laughs> Let me show you. Rhinestone picker, Bondic. Okay, Bondic is a UV glue with a UV light on the other end. Genius. Who who thought up this, right? So it has on one end this fancy, fancy, like little needle applicator for the glue. I think I need to change my glue though. Okay, so before I do that though, I gotta get some stuff ready to glue. So you gotta work with two hands here. If you're not good at doing that, it's kind of hard to work with this, but... 
So this big one here, I'm going to use the Bondic glue. <sighs> Lucky you, Allison. <laughs> the exchange rate's good. So I'm going to put uh, the glue here in the center. It's going to take quite a bit. And it's kind of gel, so it's thicker. And then hit it with the light. Get in there. And it will cure the glue in there. And it's fast. Super fast. Seriously, somebody became a millionaire on this one. And Lonnie, thank you. That <laughs> cool tool. Cool tool. All right, good, we're nice and set. So if this light ever burns out, this works. I like the, the glue though, it's quick. Okay, so I wanna work around the front part here. See if you'll notice our dragonfly sits on the rock sort of at an angle. So it's sort of sideways, see that? It's like that on all of them. So it's just what it is. So I like to put jewels around there. And I think I'm going to put a big red one right here. Yes. Oh, that's going to be pretty. So I'm going to get my adhesive out and on there. And if you don't have this, top coat works the same. Nail polish top coat. Or rhinestone adhesive. They actually have a thing. Yeah, I have that too. <laughs> it comes with rhinestones half the time. So, anyways, look at that. Sets it instantly. Hi, Kathleen. Thanks for popping in. Okay, so I'm just going to start um, adding some rhinestones around in here, around the thorax. Ooh, look, they're the UV ones. They light up. That's what these do, too. These, like, glow in the UV light. These are so cool. Okay, I'm kind of going in a rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and the colors I want around my dragonfly. So this is a yellow rhinestone next. I'll bring you down when I get these on here so you can see up close what I've done. I'm going to go and work around the camera. <laughs> Sorry if I bump it. Oh, I think I ran out of glue. There's some. Okay, I'm going to grab green, like an emerald color. Here.
and we'll go with a lighter one here. And this is all happening on a Santorini. Isn't that cool? It's a whole new meaning to rock painting, right? 3D painting. <laughs> Are you guys excited about trying it? Or am I just crazy? Okay, and we're going to come around the back side here. I think I'm going to put a big blue one there. And then some purple ones up around it. All right, I got to find some purple ones. Hang on. <laughs> purple, where are we? There's some. All right, I'm going to give you a tour real quick around that. I think that's really pretty. It turned out pretty good. All right. So I also like to go up the wings with some bling bling. I'm not not too, too crazy, but just a few up in here on the wings. It's pretty exciting. I get really crazy excited when I do these. I'm like, my husband's like, why are you giggling all night long? <laughs> because they're so pretty. Right?
Thank you, Debbie, Cindy, and Jody. Thank you. Okay, in here in this little space, I'm going to put an AB crystal little one. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Thanks. Ooh, I think I don't have the right size. Uh-oh. Just kidding. You guys are scared, huh? Okay, and then I'm going to put um, one, two, and one, two there. And then we're going to find a headdress and we'll be curing it and we'll be done. I love Bondic. It's so easy. If you don't have it, like I said, you can use rhinestone adhesive, top coat, all of that with a toothpick. This tool just is so easy to use, but I don't know anything about it. I don't know, you know, how much it costs or anything. I do know it's on uh, Amazon, but so. If you need a UV adhesive tool that's easy, yeah, very good, very, very good. Uh, it has a lid somewhere. Don't lose the lid. <laughs> don't be losing lids. It comes, I don't know if it comes with a refill, but I, I have a refill. It looks like that. And it pops into the light. See right there? And then the light's on the other end. And there's the switch for the light. And then you can get into small spots with it. Pretty cool. And no, I'm not affiliated yet. I have been approached by a couple, so maybe I'm thinking about it. As many links as I send you guys to, what do you think? Do you think I should or shouldn't get an affiliate link from Amazon?
All right, in the cooker we go. Oh, wait, one more. I forgot. <laughs> okay, the headdress. Lori says yes. Thanks, Lori. I never know how to feel about it, you know? I know some people just think uh, no, and some people are like, heck yes. So here's a cross. That's a cross. Everybody get a... I'm going to take a poll. <laughs> or, Cindy, you tell me which one you like, since this is yours. So that's the cross, and I'll show you that up close. At focus, camera. Cross. This one's like a teardroppy looking one. Turn my camera so I can get a better angle. Or how about so that's the teardrop or whatever that is shape is. Where we have this other teardrop. And I have this long, like, peridot color. Nah, that's too, I don't like that one. You could put a bow tie, <laughs> I think. Let me see if it's, if it, no, it's crooked. Darn it. Let's see, what else? I have, oh, I have a crown, like an actual crown. Could give him a crown. I think it's a king's crown, too. The crown. What do you think? You like the teardrop? The first teardrop. Cindy likes the first one. Okay, Cindy, what do you think of this crown? We'll do between the crown and the teardrop. So there's the crown. Okay, first teardrop. You got it. This is the first teardrop. And it'll look like that. I think you picked well. <laughs> All right, let me get the bondage back out. I would have chosen that, so <laughs> you chose well. I This is absolutely the one I was digging, so... And these are concave underneath, so you need a mound of something, whatever you're using. See, they have a curve. I don't know if you can see that. See the curve? So you need to have it enough there where it touches. I can't even believe I got that right the first time I dropped it. Nice. <laughs> don't look a gift horse. <laughs> Okay, now it's going to go back into the UV lamp for, I don't know, five or ten minutes at least, just to be sure, because there's some thick resin in here, in these bits in here, and it needs to cure a lot. So, let me give you another 
look see and then I'm going to say good night Oh wait, Cindy wanted me to show you the backs. Okay, so this is for, I'm gonna show you Holly's first. I gotta take off my gloves, okay, hang on, for Holly. <clears throat> so Holly's is all finished, completed. And the back is a message to Holly from her grandma, Cindy. And I did this by printing uh, with a font that I liked onto the acetate and cut it out, the transparency film. I cut it out to fit the rock and I mod used Mod Podge under it and let it dry for days and then a UV resin on top of it, two coats, and then did this one just the same sort of way except for I added a different uh, glitter here. And then the back of Leo's, I gotta grab some gloves, his is still wet. The key to that is you have to do the back first all the way, like the UV has to be all the way because you can't flip this over and work on the back. So when you're working on the front, you have to make really good sure that the back doesn't get obscured, you know, you don't mess it up. So. It's a really cool way to add a message, a long one, and be consistent with your writing. It wasn't my writing, it was a font. <laughs> and it's a calligraphy app, it's just called Calligraphy. It's an app for your phone, you just type it in there and then you can print it. It'll save it to your photo album and then you can print it from there and then shrink it down from your printer. So that's what I got for you today. That was a nice long time to spend with you and I appreciate it so much. I love spending time with you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And thank you Cindy for watching and all the input and I'm so glad you got to hang out. Good night, everyone. Take good care. I'll see you again real soon.